live from New York City, it's The Cube at Big Data NYC 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, WAN Disco, with support from EMC, MarkLogic, and Teradata. With hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Kelly. Welcome to the Big Apple, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and we are here live all week at Hadoop World and Strata, and we call this Big Data NYC. As you know, this is our fifth year at Hadoop World, and Jeff Kelly and I are really pleased to be here. Uh, our other co-host, John Furrier, is back in, uh, in Palo Alto working the crowd chat stream, but we've got a big uh, a set of events going on this week. We really have three things. Really, the, the Cube is going to be broadcasting on today, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, we are live at the Hilton Times Square. Uh, we, at, at three o'clock today, or four o'clock today rather, we've got a capital markets event. We're inviting a, a number of our Wall Street clients and other friends, and Jeff Kelly is going to be giving a presentation, releasing never before seen data on the big data market. And then this evening at six o'clock, we have the Cube party celebrating five years of Cube. Can you believe it? It's been five years, Jeff, that uh, we started. And I remember in 2010, getting the call from John Furrier saying, hey, we're doing Hadoop World get your butt to New York City, and uh, really the market has evolved in, a, in an amazing way since then. You know, Hadoop back then was, most people didn't know what Hadoop was. What's Hadoop? That's a funny sounding word. And it really has uh, been, a, been a lightning in a bottle, hasn't it? It sure has. I mean, the ecosystem has exploded over the last five years. Um, and you know, we're seeing this pressure being put on the industry heavyweights uh, in the data management space by the, this crop of new and emerging companies that are leveraging things like Hadoop and open source software and a new commodity hardware scale out approach to data management, collectively called big data, and it's really exciting. Well, what, do you, what, do you, what, do you, what evidence do you have that the pressure is being put on the big guys? I mean, what can you share with us that's uh, sort of signs or examples of that? Sure. Well, Dave, as you know, we, we talked to hundreds of big data practitioners, data management practitioners, data warehouse managers, um, and they consistently tell us that they are struggling with their data warehouse uh, installations. They're starting to buckle under the pressure of increasing data volumes and data velocity. Um, they're expensive. They don't allow for the flexibility that uh, companies need today to really compete uh, at the speed of business. So what we're hearing uh, consistently from practitioners is they're looking to these new uh, and emerging methods of processing, storing, analyzing data to help them better compete. Um, it's impacting the traditional world of data management in that a lot of these uh, companies are baselining their spend in the EDW space. They're carving off uh, a portion of their spend and putting that in R&D and things like Hadoop to try to figure this out. Um, because the reality is, despite the hunger for a new approach, this stuff is really hard. There's no question about that. But you know, we are seeing a shift happening, and it's real. So we're going to be unpacking this all week, and you know, one of the things that we're going to be looking at is really the effect of uh, Hadoop and big data on the traditional enterprise software business, but also how to play the big data space, because the reality, Jeff, is there aren't a lot of public companies in the big data space. You've essentially got uh, Splunk, Tableau, and ClickTech, and they're kind of sort of outliers to big data. You wouldn't call them sort of core you know, big data, even though uh, Tableau's symbol is data. Um, but but there's not a lot of ways to play big data, so we're going to talk about that in the capital markets event. And you've got some really interesting angles, and, and, the, and I'll give you a little tidbit. The premise of the angle that Jeff's going to talk about today is really that big data practitioners are going to create more value than the supply side. So, but how do you find those people that are really good at, at doing big data? So that's something that we're going to look at. We've got people on the ground uh, at uh, the Javits Center, uh, trolling the floor, just talking to all the, the folks there, the practitioners, uh, the technologists. Uh, listening in on the keynotes, so they'll be reporting back all day. We've also got wall-to-wall -wall coverage of many of the practitioners, the technologists, and the companies in this big data space that we'll be interviewing, getting their perspectives on what's happening. Uh, and then, of course, as I say, we have the big Cube event uh, tonight celebrating five years of, of Cube. Uh, so, Jeff, I want to ask you, where are we at with big data? We've gone from the what is it to the how do I use it to what's all this scoop and hive and flume and yarn stuff. Uh, are we finally in the stage of production where companies are delivering ROI on, uh, mm -hmm. on, on their big data spend? Well, yeah, I think we're past that early phase where, as you said, people were just trying to figure out what some of these terms meant. Um, you know, our data shows that early adopters, big data practitioners, are starting to move workloads into production. Um, you know, some feedback we got from our most recent adoption survey, 31% of practitioners told us they are supporting 
uh, production applications with Hadoop and NoSQL and other big data systems. Um, another 28% or so POC, still kind of kicking the tires, trying to understand how it works and where it's going to fit in their organization, but still a large chunk, 41% or so, evaluating the technology. So, you know, we're getting there. We're starting to cross the chasm, as it's known, um, but I think it's still fairly early days. And from an ROI perspective, um, as I mentioned earlier, and it sounds simple, but the fact is this stuff is still really hard. And uh, most practitioners that we talk to, the average, I should say, uh, are not realizing the full return on their investment yet at this point. You know, part of that's the nature of, the, of where they are in the life cycle uh, in terms of these investments are still pretty early and it's going to take time to achieve that ROI. But the other thing is they're, they're struggling with aligning things like IT in the business. There's a lot of data and technology related challenges. There's people in process related challenges. But the interesting thing that we see is that there are a handful of companies that are doing this and doing it well and making a profit. And, you know, we think that those are the companies you want to focus on from an investment perspective uh, in terms of placing your bets in big data. So we're going to be digging into those all week, uh, Thursday and Friday today. We're going, to, we're going to, you know, if John Furrier were here, if no doubt we'd Jeff be having discussions about the who, who are the horses on the track. Uh, so we're going to have those. You know, John is on CrowdChat, so, so he'll, he'll be chiming in. Is there going to be a red hat of Hadoop? Uh, is your data warehouse a dinosaur? How can you take advantage of this emerging technology? How do you find the skill sets? Those are the things that we'll be talking about. Um, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back. This is theCUBE. We're live from Big Data NYC. We'll be right back. <laughs>